This is geometry lesson 3.8 and a little bit of 3.9 and we're going to discuss perpendicular lines and perpendicular bisectors. So first of all we need to define what perpendicular lines are and you have you seen perpendicular lines back in elementary school but we're going to take a look at it in a little more detail this time. So two segments, rays or lines, are perpendicular. Remember IFF stands for if and only if. The lines containing them form a 90 degree angle and the symbol that we use for perpendicularity is this upside down T. So angle ABC is a right angle here so ABC is a right angle and you can see the symbol right there so then we know that lines M and N would be perpendicular to each other. So we can write that in a few different ways. We could say M is perpendicular to N or line AB is perpendicular to line BC or the measure uh, or I'm sorry line M is perpendicular to CB or we could say line N was perpendicular to AB all of which would be perfect ways to indicate perpendicularity and remember with your assumptions that drawings things you can assume from drawings um, with parallel lines you couldn't assume things were parallel you couldn't assume angle measures so that same thing happens here you cannot assume things are par perpendicular unless they're marked so unless you see that right angle symbol in there the other thing I want to just talk about it mentions it in your reading but if you have a set of perpendicular lines you know this one this angle here is 90 but you also know that all four angles that are created by those intersecting lines would all be 90 degrees so all four would or all four angles there are created uh, and you could say that they were perpendicular so we have some theorems that are going to come out uh, or come in in this lesson two perpendicular theorem is the first one it says if two lines L and M are each perpendicular to the same line then they are parallel to each other so if I look here and L is perpendicular to N and M is perpendicular to N look at these two angles these happen to be corresponding angles so therefore I know if those lines are corresponding then I know that L and M are parallel to each other so I don't have to go through that whole process there's the two perpendicular theorem for me that just basically says if I have two lines that are perpendicular to the same line in this case N then those two lines are parallel to each other and the next theorem, perpendiculars to parallels theorem. So it says, in a plane, if a line is perpendicular to one of the two parallel lines, then it's also perpendicular, perpendicular to the other. So it still uses that same corresponding angles postulate. If I know that these lines are parallel, then I know these angle measures have to be equal. And if one of them is 90, that means the other has to be 90. So without going through the whole corresponding angles postulate, I can just use the perpendicular to parallels theorem and it's here in symbols if M is parallel to N and N is perpendicular I'm sorry I misspoke if M is parallel to L and N is perpendicular to L then I know M is perpendicular to N now when we studied slopes of parallel lines we found that the slopes of the lines were the same so what I want to do now is look at slopes of perpendicular lines so I want to take your draw your attention to uh, cast drawing that I have and we will explore different slopes and what it means when they're perpendicular. Notice here I have two lines that I graphed and this line here in red has a slope of 2 and my slope here of the green one has a slope of negative 1 half and so these lines appear to be perpendicular and now if we go back to our notes with our our, in our theorem it says that if the products of their slope is negative 1 or their opposite reciprocal so let's take a look one of my slopes was 2 and my other slope was negative 1 half so if I multiply those together I'm just gonna put this over 1 just to make it easier to multiply my fractions 2 times a negative 1 is negative 2 1 times 2 is 2 and that has a, is simplified to be a negative 1 so here's a situation where I have two lines that are perpendicular to each other and if you look at their slopes they are opposite reciprocals or they have a product of negative one so that's what you're going to be looking for when you're looking to make slopes of our lines perpendicular to each other so here find the slope of a line perpendicular to y equals four fifths x minus eight so if you notice the slope of this is four fifths 
So we know that if we take 4 fifths times some other slope, I have to get negative 1 if I want them to be perpendicular. So I just went through and, and multiplied times the reciprocal of that to just kind of isolate m and solve for m. So when I did that, 5 fourths times a negative 1 gives me a negative 5 fourths. So, and let's just check that out to make sure that those two slopes, 4 fifths and negative 5 fourths, come out to be a negative 1. And if you notice, negative 20, positive 20 gives me a negative 1 as, an amp uh, as, as my product. And so once again, these are opposite reciprocals. So basically, you flip the fraction and you change the sign and then you're going to have opposite reciprocals of each other. So that's what we're looking for when we want to uh, make lines per perpendicular to each other. Here I have one more example to work through. In this, equ in this example, we're going to need to draw on what we know from our lesson in Chapter 1, where we were writing equations given, given a point we know and given our slope so we're going to expand on that a little bit here so I want you to write an equation of the line M that passes through the point uh, negative 4 2 and is perpendicular to the line Y equals 3x plus 5 so the first thing we need to do is find a slope of a line that would be perpendicular to, th to this equation so perpendicular to that, the opposite reciprocal of 3 would be a negative 1 third. So I know the slope of my new line has to be negative 1 third. So you can see I've put it in place of y in, I put y equals mx plus b, put one, negative 1 third in there. So now I need to find b, but and I can do that by substituting this point in place of x and y. So negative 4 goes in place of x and 2 goes in place of y. So I can solve this equation that gives me 4 over 3 plus b equals 2. I changed 2 to 6 thirds just to kind of uh, make things e easier to subtract when I was dealing with my fractions. So I brought negative 4 thirds, I subtracted that from both sides and that gave me 2 thirds. So now I have an equation I know what b is and I know what m is so I can plug that back in so y equals negative one-third x plus two-thirds. So I know that that was kind of a quick example of that but we will work through more of it in class so please please don't worry just make sure you have taken good notes here. Now the last thing I want to discuss we're going to do a calculator activity in class but I do want to talk about lesson 3-9 very quickly um, it's just going to talk about what is a perpendicular bisector and what is a bisector of a segment. So a bisector, as we studied with angles, cuts an angle in half into two equal parts. So a bisector of segment is going to do the same thing. It's going to cut the segment into two equal parts. The thing with a bisector of a segment is it doesn't have to go through in any certain way. As you can see here in both of these examples, these are bisectors my distance from A to C is the same as my distance from C to B and G to I is the same as I to H. So both of these things are examples of bisectors of a segment. But I want to clarify the difference of between a perpendicular bisector and a plain old bisector. Here this one can go through and happen to go through at 63 degrees. It could go through it at infinite different, uh, me uh, different angle measures. But a perpendicular bisector is special and it's something that we will work with often. And what that means is that it's going to go through that segment not only in the middle but it's also going to go through at 90 degrees. So that's the focus of Lesson 3-9. There's other pieces to 3-9 but we're not going to be focusing on that information, just the bisector of a segment and the perpendicular bisector of a segment. So that's the only part of 3.9 that we're going to focus our attention on this this year. So this concludes Lesson 3.8 and 3.9 and it also concludes our study of Chapter 3.